Next is, how would you guys define confidence and self-esteem? I always aspired to have a Robert Downey Jr. type of confidence, but while reading The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, I started to put this belief into perspective. I understand that on Charisma University, the module confidence has the goal of improving one's social skills, but in within oneself, what is the best way to feel confident and self-assured, and is it even desirable? Um, how do you define your confidence without it developing into entitlement? So I haven't read The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Have you? No, I tried to listen to the audiobook, but just didn't end up making my way through it. I suspect we could be splitting hairs over semantics here. You know what I mean? Like, I think, and this is the thing that good authors will do, is that they'll take a, something that is a, a weirdly defined word, like love or self-esteem or confidence, or that means a lot of different things to a lot of people, and take issue with a particular definition of it, so as to draw a line. Um, but we probably, Mark, and we probably largely agree on this point. So I'll yeah. try to elaborate it. Um, when I think of confidence and maybe this is, it's, it's the belief that what you are doing, not just what, well, in part will go well and that if it doesn't, you will be okay. Yeah. Both of those contribute to it. Um, and so I think that what Mark might be highlighting is just the belief that things are going to go well and which can make you arrogant and brash head and you're going to, you're going to do well. Um, but also he probably defines it. And this is just me guessing based on your question as, uh, closed offness to new information or, or ways of adjusting, which in some ways I, I agree. I think that that, that is, and I'll, you look at like someone like Conor McGregor, um, confidence when taken to the absolute extreme can look like that. Self-esteem is your reputation with yourself. It is, uh, do you trust yourself? When you say that you are going to do something, do you have a deep seated to believe that, that, that it's done, that you are going to do it, or at least make the attempt to do it? Um, do you trust yourself to be a good person? Do you trust yourself to live up to your principles? Do you keep your commitments? All of those kinds of things. Um, and what I would say is that self-esteem is a, self esteem is here, confidence is here, and probably at the bottom is self-love, which is just like total acceptance. For people who are just listening to this. Sorry, bottom of the pyramid, self-love. Middle level, self-esteem. Tip of the pyramid, confidence. And what's cool is you can work on this either from top down, bottom I was just up, or, say, or at the same time. Unlike a real pyramid, you actually can start with yeah, yeah. confidence and then get to self-esteem and then mm -hmm. get to self-love. In fact, that's often what people do is they're most interested in like, I want to be confident. Let me get a six pack. It's like, and that's going to make me believe that this interaction is going to go well. <laughs> I think the easiest order is self-esteem, confidence, self-love. You lifted weights first, dude. Yeah. It's conf it, it's, this is what people do is, is they do the loop. They start at the top, they go down. Um, yeah, mo most people do is they lift weights and they, they're like, they get assurances that situations will go well. And then after they do that for a while, then they're like, wait a second, I want to work on my character. Like I want to become a person who does what he says and believes and can handle rejection. And then at the bottom is self-love, which is like, I accept myself even though I know I can't handle rejection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I accept myself even though I lie. I accept myself even though I do things that cut at my own self-esteem which is like this weird paradoxical thing so uh i don't know what the, f the fundamental question was but yes confidence can go awry uh i think it's still worth working on and, and developing it's also just a nice to have it's like highly associated at least the my definition of it with positive feeling which is fun <laughs> yeah, yeah and external success yeah and external success so uh is there is am i dancing around the question was there a I feel like you got it. It's just what were your definitions? Yeah, it's just. Uh, and then the final bit is how do you define your confidence without it developing into entitlement? Um. So, why I guess why would it? Yeah, confidence. I guess what I can see is someone who's like, the, like just the belief that um, to take any of these fighters who think that the greatest fighter on the planet and they don't work for the fight and then they get knocked out. Well, the like, example the guy gave was Robert Downey Jr. So I guess that more clearly skirts the line between like being arrogant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting thing about Robert Downey Jr. Because I I had this impression <clears throat> as well because of his interviews and because of Tony Stark that he is this, you know, cocksure, confident, arrogant guy. And, and he'll make jokes at other people's expense in interviews. But what you don't see is apparently he's incredibly kind when they all get together on Avengers. He takes the lead on making sure everyone is comfortable in their role and within the group and feels included such that when he's doing an interview with Chris Evans and takes a jab at Chris Evans. And you're like, oh man, like he's got such confidence. He's willing to make that joke right at his face. He has a backlog of months of being 
super kind to Chris Evans, such that when you ask Chris about him in an interview, he gushes about him. Mm-hmm. So I think people are missing that ingredient of RDJ. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, he's this, he, he puts on this front of, and maybe is incredibly confident and he's very quick witted and he's very charismatic, but also he's super kind and thoughtful to people and treats them well. Mm-hmm. So when he makes a quip, it doesn't matter to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think he's actually entitled. I guess is what yes, I'm saying. Your entitlement need not rise with your confidence at all. I think um, taking the other example of, of the fighter, like it depends what you're confident in. If you're confident in that, even if you don't work, everything's going to turn out the way that you want. Okay. That's going to be a problem. But if you're confident that if you put in the effort and if you treat people well, and if you live ethically, things will tend to be okay. Sure. It's like, what do you place your confidence? You could be in? confident in your ability to outwork someone. Yes. And then you're going to have intense training camps all the time. You'll be well prepared even for your fifth title defense. And ultimately with confidence, like at the bottom of that thing is like, you do need to be confident enough to handle failure. Like, because that's the other thing is like, I cannot work them. Well, maybe you meet someone that you cannot work mm-hmm. and maybe, and then, and then it's all right. Can I handle the fact that I just bumped up against the wall that I was unable to, to go through? Um, so yeah, I think that's good. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.